Thank you for coming today, the citizens, members of the press. Uh, we have taken this press conference today because we are a little concerned about what's happening in Kala Academy. We have taken this press conference today because we are a little concerned about what's happening in Kala Academy. Uh, especially now that most of the structural works have been completed and they have gone into repairing the interiors and the architecture of the building. For 40 years, uh, ever since Kala Academy was built, we always see the white finished Kala Academy. But the truth is that actually the structure has been not repaired properly, not maintained. Every time they go to repair the structure, they put a false ceiling, they paint the building, but the, uh, the actual slabs in the building has not been properly repaired. One of the good things, at least as per from what little information we have got, this is the first time that the structure, the slabs, the beams, the columns have been actually repaired. They have. But this over here is a great example of what used to be Kala Academy. This was the slab. When Kala Academy was here, up to here, this part of it, you can see the line, this was the original slab of this part of it, the amphitheater okay. part. This was the original waterproofing when the building was built. In 1996, there was a visit of the Prime Minister. They, it was done in a rush. They just put another waterproofing without removing the old waterproofing. In 2004, before the first AP, they put another waterproofing without removing the old waterproofing. You see, you've got a slab which is less than one foot deep and you've got more than one and a half foot, half a meter actually, of waterproofing. This is so much of load on the slabs that the whole building was overloaded. And that's why GC said the building is suffering from structural problems. Mm -hmm. This is a photo that we got. You can just see how much of the waterproofing they have removed to just show the slab. Which is the correct thing to do, is to remove the waterproofing and, and put new waterproofing on it. But we are just saying, look at the stress the building was under because this is the thickness of the slab, at most you can have this much waterproofing, but this is the, the what we call the dead load, and that's why the, the building is, has been suffering. So, so much of what they are doing now, at least initially, was good, because they, they were repairing the structure and, and they were asked to do that. But a real problem is, is what is now happening. So we would like to go back to the High Court order, which came about Kala Academy in July of last year. The High Court has very clearly, after studying the work order that the government submitted, they said this word, no portion of Kala Academy will be demolished, but only repaired to preserve and upkeep the same. When you go for a repair or a renovation project, it is understood that you follow what are called the principles of conservation. This means you identify three types of spaces in the building. There is something called a preservation space, that is a touch-me-not area. For example, Mario Miranda's murals. There are only seven murals by Mario Miranda in the full world. Mario Miranda is no longer with us. So, it will be, it's impossible to replicate them now. Those are touch-me-not. Then you look at some parts which are damaged, which you bring back. We call that restoration and retrofitting. They, for example, the slabs in the amphitheater which were badly damaged, they have now repaired those. But then, and sometimes, if science or, or need justifies it, you can do what's called service upgradation. One problem in Kala Academy has been the ACs. The ACs are very outdated and in very bad condition. So they gave a good justification that we need to bring new services in. But what we are a little concerned about is that other spaces without any justification, they are making changes to. So this is Nandita Goya Perotra who used to be at Charles Perea Associates, now director of foundation. Explain a little bit about the architecture of the building. Yeah, so, so you know the architecture is not just the walls and the ceiling or the roof or whatever, it's it's everything. It's so the design of it is is all the finishes, the, the colours you choose, the um, you know where you choose to put the murals like they were painted and, and all that becomes what is the design of the building. So if we start changing everything else and maybe just keep the walls or just keep the slab or something, it's not going to be the same design. 
and, and it's not going to have the same ambiance at all. So all the, the thing about saying, oh, we really liked and appreciated um, uh, the building, the Kalai Academy, you might not have the same building. It's, it's, it's going to be another kind of building because from what we understand, the finishes are being changed. So I'll just show you what finishes were there and the kind of murals. This was when it was first opened uh, in the 80s. These murals were painted. This is, these are the kind of, in fact, for these, Mr. Pereira was there continuously day and night on, on you know, at Kala Academy on the site getting these things done. He, he did some of them, some of it himself. He got signboard painter. It was, it was a whole kind of thing. And you can see how bright and airy is the building. But, so this was the original space, this is where that Okla is and stuff. And we don't know, so we have we, not been allowed inside that building now, when the work is going on. But also, we, so we just heard from different people that, oh, they're doing a you know, very dark floor, a black floor. So this is just a, a, a kind of a rendering, a, a drawing of what we think it might look like. We, have, we don't know. We're just running through different things that we have heard just so that you have a sense of what is happening because once it's all done, there's nothing you would be able to do because at that point to go back and make changes will be almost impossible because of there will be no budget for that. Okay. Yeah, so this is what it was, if you remember it was that Shabad stone which is a very rough kind of uh, natural looking stone and the white china mosaic within which is also what made it very uh, people friendly. You know, no one felt like you had to really dress up and, and go there. You were keeping out people. Uh, it was for the, the, the citizens of Goa and it was very welcoming as a, as a space, as a foyer. It wasn't air conditioned. It just had the breeze coming off the river and it would go through the space. So all that is going to get lost. So now look at, look at what a uh, we've been told that this was one of the options they are looking at. This is another option yeah. that we have been informed they are looking at. So I mean, uh, one of the main things, if you all remember, Kalakini is not a very, Kalakini's main uh, lobby entrance space and the main area is not a very high seating space. So it is, it can very easily become dark and uncomfortable. And uh, basics of architecture is that if you've got a narrow space, you make it light. You keep it clear. If you've got something you want to bring attention to, like the artworks, you don't distract with something like a very fancy tiles. Uh, these are these are basics of architecture and interiors, but we don't know what what how these proposals are coming out, and and we don't know yeah, the murals are going to stay. They they have not properly documented what was there. So what are they going to? They they had to. You know, not I mean, they've not removed anything. These murals were painted directly on the plaster, but but they most probably had to remove a lot of the plaster to do the repairs. And it's, if it's not been documented, they're not going to be able to go back and do it and and, and, and sort of replace it. So these are real problems which we we just want to like inform the public because it is. This is all being done with public funds, and it's important that the public is aware of it. Because we don't like, we are frustrated not being able to have any influence on this. And we had said we would, as you know, we, we are here to help you. We have all the archives, we have all the original drawings, uh, old photographs, everything, and we would do it pro bono. We are not asking for anything. We just would like the building because we know that it will change way too drastically if we if you know it's not it's not sort of done in the right in the right spirit. And the main reason why even these proposals are still proposals because nobody's been allowed inside, nobody knows what actually is the final decision for the Kala Academy. But already in the past artworks have been changed. Uh, Charles Korea had this idea to use the use colors which are very earthy, re representing Goa's family Mati. And then for Ifi, they repainted it in Arkadi and they used these cartoonish colors. 
and you can see how the ideas of the illusion. Look at the staircase on the left. How it really looks like it's one. And then very soft, you know, and then that's like such a hard edge thing. So that was done in 2004. So already, it had started to like you know make pretty big changes. But but uh, now, of course, it will also be going in a completely different trajectory. We don't we don't know that. So coming to the auditorium, I mean, this auditorium is what the only auditorium in India designed by Bolt, Baranek and Newman. Till today, in Acoustics College, we are teaching Baranek's books. Uh, there was this concept that you had a transparent ceiling with a reflective curtain. And these balconies were supposed to help create a more holistic sound for live performances. Uh, because there, were, there would be sunny holes in the side, Charles Correa got Mario Miranda to put in the artwork to make the balconies look a little bit more alive. And they are... Uh, and, yeah, uh, and, and you could adjust the thing, like a, a musician could go in and, and get more reverberation or less by making adjustments. There was a behind it which yeah. would help. And, and, and the, the people at the Kala Academy were trained. In fact, if you, if you ask anyone who performed there before mm -hmm. 2004, they would say how uh, you know alive the the uh, auditorium was. So in 2004, uh, so Mr. Korea's sketch actually or what was being done. In 2004 for Ify, they replaced the they replaced the ceiling acoustics with some flat panels, saying that it is a new saying it's a new material that will serve better. Now from what we've heard from the consult from the acoustic consultant, this is not the proper material that they have used in the top ceiling. So in 2004, there has been some big discrepancy, possibly a fraud that has happened in the acoustics of the auditorium already. And in doing so, they, they deleted the acoustics of one of the greatest acousticians in the world to put some random panels in the top room. And Charles Murray has saw this and he made a fuss about it in 2004, wrote to Parikar as the chief secretary, but it just got put in a file and nothing happened. This is how the ceiling used to be. It was just a jali and above it was a reflective curtain and they had an artwork painted on the curtain much like most of Kala Academy had this which, artwork. Which was so, so when the lights would come uh, on after the performance, the, the lights would come on just in that space. So within each panel was a kind of a view of, the, of, the, um, of just being in Goa under the palm trees. Which was a really nice thing, all that's gone, it's anyway. But we thought this was an opportunity to bring much of that back. But so instead of bringing it back to what it originally was, this is what we have seen a proposal or heard about a proposal. So you're going to, if this is allowed to happen, you lose one of the touch me nots of Goa in Mario Miranda's work, and you lose what little of Bolt Baranic Newman's. Acoustic design was there, that's also gone. So we are very concerned, very, very concerned about the kind of things that are being planned for Kala Academy in terms of architecture right now. And normally, I mean, this is a great example we found in 2003, they wanted to repair some tiles. They've written a letter to Charles Korea saying, when you are in Goa, let us know and we will go to buy the tiles together. Most clients consult their architect unless there has been a big fight or a big falling out. And till now at least government of Goa has on face been very good to us. So we don't know why why suddenly this type of secrecy is happening. And recently, just recently, the Gujarat government have been involving us on a similar Charles Korea project, a stadium in Ahmedabad. They have appointed their own architect, a different architect and an engineer, but we are also brought on as a consultant to make sure that the works that are being proposed by the, by the architect and the engineer are in tune with what the original design is. So we provided all of the original documents and it helped the architect and the engineer to do this at the Bar Stadium. So why don't we learn from what other states are doing? Why in Goa do we want to do everything in such a secretive manner without consulting anybody, without showing anything? It's just a little sad. To close, we want to go back to what the court said. The court, uh, once again, we're going to say that the court said no court should be demolished, which till now we are satisfied. They're not demolishing anything. But they have to repair to preserve and upkeep the building. 
they, 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 this is not a new architectural project. There are many Ravindra Bhavans that are pending in Goa. Those are new architectural projects for any architect who wants to take them up. Yeah, but Kala Academy is a, a repair work, a renovation work, a conservation work. And so we are like, this project has to be addressed from that angle, not as a new design. It's, I mean, and we are not losing much from it. I mean, yeah, so this, you know, the thing is that it's been, it was done uh, sort of under uh, Charles Correa's instructions. It was, um, it was appreciated, it was photographed, it was published um, in architectural journals, in, in the regular press. People, people like the building. It's, I, I mean, I just would say that, that we will not suffer if, or Mr. Correa's reputation won't suffer if the building is changed completely. You know, it, it's not like people are going to say, oh my gosh, did he do this? There's documentation of how it was. But, if for the people of Goa, for the citizens of Goa, it's not going to be the same building then. So I think, you know, unless at this moment one speaks out and says, look, let, let's see what's happening, what, why is it not going, you know, to do the earlier finishes and stuff and bring back all that, bring back Mario's, uh, Mario Miranda's um, mural, or these other murals which are very beautiful, like the, the, the main mural also as you enter is of the, the Mangabi uh, river and, and it's, you're going to get a completely different building. So we just want to leave it in the system, you know, what, what do the citizens want to happen to this building? And, and I think this is perhaps the, the last time one can speak up about it. Because, yeah, they, they've finished the structural work, they're going to start if they haven't yet started the architecture work. So now is the time to, like, that to make a, take a decision on what we want for the future. And then this is um, uh, one of our trustees, uh, Arminio uh, Rivero, who, who's been very involved also in, in helping with this whole thing of getting Kala Academy uh, uh, sort of restored and, and repaired. Okay. Uh, can can we can you sit over there so that we can ask some questions? You can take this chair. Everyone just be comfortable. We we'll get we have many more chairs if you want. Yeah. This is repairing the wall. We are already worried about the architecture. System. So I have I've been there uh, when the inspection that has to be taken place. And I questioned him, the minister over there, regarding the uh, architecture which was inside. He said that will be originally fixed back again. And he said it was open for suggestions. So they have come to you. They should put the plans out in the public, no, that we can have a debate about it. Okay. I mean, it's one thing to say that they are open to suggestions, but then call, before when the, when the court took action, Kalak and his member secretary called a stakeholder meeting. And they had called, they had summoned everybody including us and all the other government and non-government stakeholders for a meeting. And in that meeting they had taken the suggestions. So, as the owner of the building, they, the Kalak Academy has to initiate this process for suggestions. But they said everything will be restored inside the building. Yeah, can I address yeah. in Dr. Victor? Yeah, there were two issues. One is the restoration of the structure, and second is the restoration of the, the architecture of the building. Yeah. In the uh, restoration of the structure, yes, they, they after, uh, after kind of engaging with them, and that too, uh, with a long uh, engagement, they agreed that they were going to restore the structure. The, for us, the equally important is the layer of architecture. Because that's the one that connects to the public. It creates the color to me in what we understand it to be as a public space and as a space that uh, people feel comfortable in. And 
the, 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 the thing is also the building is a representative of uh, the work of a number of masters. All right? This is the work of Mr. Charles Goyer, of Mario Miranda, of our uh, uh, Newman and... Uh, yeah, the old organic Newman, the, 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 the acoustic. Who are acoustic consultants. It's also the work of an artist, the one who's painted the, the murals, which is a very fine work, which couldn't be reproduced in the later 2004 renovation. Yeah? This is a place which is uh, a point where all our... Uh, the, the important uh, people in their respective professions have put the assets and have created what I consider today a masterpiece and all of you all will agree it's, it's a masterpiece by itself. So, uh, letting that go is something of a loss to all of us as Goans, not just as the Charles Clare Foundation, it's a big loss to us all of us as Goans. And this is something that we hope is going to be uh, preserved. Now, the problem is like this, that there is this whole idea that if a place is renovated, then the renovation has to show. Which means that there's a pressure on the, the government to say that, okay, now we have made it uh, whole new sparkling uh, interiors. You know, the interiors are something that we are really worried about because it could take us into a completely different direction. There have been illustrations that the Charles Clear Foundation has worked on to show how change in it, uh, interiors can dramatically change our understanding of the spaces of collective. So this is something that we are concerned and we would like to, to put the stress on. We are, we are not relying just on the words that the minister says that it will be restored because we don't understand what is the extent of restoration, whether it's just structure as well as the, the architecture or it's just the structure. So our concern is this. We do not want to get up, say, six months from now and discover that <coughs> collecting it looks like another building somewhere else in, uh, you know, anywhere else like it could have been renovated like a hotel is normally renovated with hotels, interiors keep on changing every three years, five years. We are not under that kind of pressure to change the interiors. For us, the, the beauty of the restoration is for all the architects, the community of architectural community, the world community to be able to come back and always find the space which has been so important to the world public. Have you met the uh, minister regarding this? Yes, at the early stages we met the minister. But, but is the it? fact is now we're, we're not, we're shut out of the process. So we have, all we're saying is that we don't, we don't have our eyes on what is happening. So we just want to inform the public that, that perhaps there should be some way of, of putting pressure on the, the on the Color Academy to be more transparent as to what is being done because you know what I feel is like once that kind of budget is is spent, where is there going to be another opportunity to bring you know it'll again we'll have to wait 15, 20 years. By that time maybe none of us are around to even like remember what it was right. So I think this is the time to do it and to do it correctly. And and uh, and be transparent about it. If if there are things that they they feel need to be changed, tell the public. Maybe the it is it is public funds after all. It's not some private client who's able to make those kind of changes. Like Armin was saying, like a hotel or something, they can change whatever they want. But these are public funds. This was a, a building commission with, with public funds, and and I, we think that that is important that the public is aware of exactly what is happening. So you would like to request that you, uh, they need to consult to you or they have to show the building? They have to show everyone, they have to yeah, show the public what, what are the final proposal for the architecture work. Basically that's what they need to do. Any any project, especially a project that has been tendered at 49 crores, then there is an architect on board who the government has, plus the PWD are working on the project. They have plans. They definitely have plans. You can't expect a 49 crore project to be done without plans and drawings and views. So, are put those out. Are they specifically uh, denying access to those plans? Uh, is it the job of us to put an RTI and get those plans? No, apart from RTI, are they denying access to you anyway as an as, uh, expert in the... You have not been allowed. We have not been yeah, allowed to go yeah. to the Kala Academy and they were consulting us very actively while the structural work was going on. Now the structural work is over and actually
actually if you go and see as architects, structural work is not our specialization. So they were sending us some issues that they observed. We were consulting our engineer from IIT Chennai who was also advising us on that. So and who also did it pro bono he because, also did because of anything. the importance yeah. of the building. That's the thing is that everyone's doing all this all pro bono. It's not going to cost them anything. But because we, we do understand the significance of this building and we don't want to jeopardize that. But it's, it is important at this moment especially and perhaps, I don't know, I hope it's not too late already, is to make sure that the finishes and everything are done and bringing it back to what it was. That's important. That's, that's you just said you are not allowed to go to Kalha right? Yeah. So who didn't allow you? There are security at the gate, they say you have to get specific permission from the Kalha Academy to access. The Kalha Academy says that the building has been handed over to PWD. We put in a letter now to the chief engineer of PWD to permit us to do an inspection of the building, but not got a reply to now. When was this? This letter we put in a few days ago. So it's, it's only recently that we have uh, been hearing that there's going to be changes mm -hmm. to the yeah. interior. So we had a level of confidence with the with the works when we were told that the whole structure was being uh, conserved. All right. It's uh, recently we've been hearing that uh, they are trying to change the interiors. That's the time when yeah. it raised an alarm, yeah. and we decided that it should be uh, the secret. We should try and examine what they are really doing. Uh, I think the. The real uh, important thing in uh, this is uh, not so much that we should be involved, but that the collectivity should be preserved. All right. Uh, whether they are doing it with or without us, uh, it should be all right. But uh, they should, their consultants have to be sensitive enough to understand what really is uh, of concern. So if they would consult us exactly, the issue would be uh, what are our concerns with the conservation, not the techniques or the missing how to get it done, you know. They have done a sufficient documentation, you know, of the collecting before they uh, demolish it. So they have got a whole lot of records which they can rely on. Further, we've got our own records which we have shared with them now and then, including the acoustic, uh, yeah, the thing, uh, acoustic treatment that existed prior to 2004. And uh, I feel that they have all the information they need yeah. If they are changing it, then they are changing it, uh, which would be sad, and we want to uh, bring it to the notice of the citizen, and that's what we have called this today's meeting as the citizens should decide. So the citizens are aware of it, they should not get up, say, six months from now, go to Kalakini and find a completely changed place, which is completely uh, cut from the cultural aspects of what Charles Korea tried to build into the building. And what the people of Goa have appreciated and have fought for. I mean, when the first reports came out that the building was being demolished, it was the people of Goa who made a big noise about it and who convinced the government to not demolish the building. So, like, we are just saying, put it all up. We are requesting the Kala Academy and the PWD to put up the final plans for the architecture. Put it to the people of Goa. With the, we the finishes, we are. Just, just as everything that is being done, just be transparent about it so we everyone knows what is happening and that's that's the problem but it, it only really as Arjun was saying it came to our attention only very recently that there was they were not following we, we had no idea what they were doing and, and we've been told that no they are sort of big changes and that's what we try to represent in those uh, renderings but uh, we, do, we don't know and so this is what we just thought it's best to be transparent about what we know and to inform the public. So that's why we are doing this. Have you, have you written to current Art and Culture Minister about uh, the same issue? Uh, we put in one letter, yeah. again the same letter when we submitted to the PWD asking for an inspection. We also asked him if he can also come and the members. So what, what was the reply? We did not get a reply. Are going to meet we hope that they would give us an opportunity to, to hear us. All right. In the past, we've had uh, various meetings with the minister. At some point, he has been uh, supportive. At some point, he has... has uh, he, well, the, the important thing is to be able to understand uh, that Kalakthani is not just a building. It's part of the citizen's uh, public space, you know. And, uh, and that makes a whole lot of difference to how it is... Built, how it is, uh, you know, finished. 
And uh, the, the important thing is that people should understand this difference. You know, you can build a number of buildings, it's just only one guy like me that, that stood and should stand. You know, so this is the difference that, that we, we've been trying to convey. It's this, diff this difference that sometimes we find difficult to communicate. You know, it's only the people who have spent time, have experienced Kalakini, you know, that uh, respect this. One very big uh, missing, uh, group of people that I find that are very concerned about Kalakini, are the Kalakini, the staff at all, you know. They have, they have been in that building, they have understood how different this building is in respect of how it is, uh, you know, what it's doing to the city and what it's doing to, to the public, you know, how they spend their, their time. And they are the ones who are, uh, you know, uh, when I speak to them, I understand that, that they also have concerns, you know. To the people who have experienced who are really the ones who are concerned about it. Do you think the damage has been done? Or if they allow you now, then you can no, prevent there is still it? Time. From what we have heard from our sources, there is still time. Because they re in April, they completed the structural work. So now is the time when they are going into the interiors. In the so if they allow you now, then you can prevent the damages. We hope, we don't know if things have been ordered, if things, we, 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 are, we are absolutely in the dark. I just want to be clear about that. We have no idea. We're not saying like this is the turning point or whatever. We have no idea. And we, we just felt that since we just found out about all this, it's best to tell the public now so that we can... I mean, if, if if everything, you know, it may be that everything's okay, but that's not the information we've got, but we've got nothing officially. We've just heard people who are bothered, who have seen what's happening and are concerned. But what exactly is happening, we, we don't know. Uh, do you all at least know who is the consultant they have taken on board for the interior or for the architectural uh, changes? So all the work has been given to Tecton and Tecton has appointed an architect of their own. Uh, I didn't get you the name. Oh. So they have got their own team. We are, we are not uh, really concerned. No, no, what I am asking Arvin is uh, who do you talk to? No, so I, 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 think that, I, I think that what we should be, what we are doing is we are actually talking Sometimes to the PWD and sometimes to, yeah. to the, the city. Because the PWD is in charge of getting the building done. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not so much the consultants, but what is the direction the consultant is given. So it would be wrong for us to you know, uh, confront the consultants. Yeah. It would be better for us to, to, uh, to speak to the public works department yeah. as the lead body engaged with getting the collectively restored. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.